center, Irma Smith, and Rodney Douglas at the forwards. And we're set to play basketball. Second game this afternoon will pit South Carolina against Florida State. South Carolina, a one-point winner against Southern Miss last night in first-round action. Florida State, the number one seed. Fred, and looking at the faces of both teams, a lot of times uh, you can tell a lot about a team by looking at their faces, and right now I see two teams that are really anxious to get started and ready to play. Ernest Smith and Ellison very antsy in the center circle, and the tip belongs to Louisville. So the Cardinals are going to get a chance to score first, and they turn it over. They get the ball in the corner to Kenny Payne, who might have had a shot and couldn't catch the pass. Well, I think you can expect that early in a ball game that uh, it's going to involve so much emotion, as this game will. Some turnovers early, a little bit uh, uh, jittery getting started, but once these first three or four minutes are after, over, you can expect them to really kick in the gear. Jack, interesting to watch Louisville after the introductions. They got together in a huddle on the floor. They look like a football team. They were smacking one another around and laughing and obviously fired up. Well, that's the kind of emotion the Cardinals need to play with to be a, a good basketball team. Again, Memphis State got them down 24 to nothing the last time they met in Freedom Hall. Just an unbelievable start. Cheyenne Gibson tries to make it 3 nothing and does. Gibson sticks the three, and Memphis State breaks out front. Well, that's pretty much the way things got started the time, uh, the last time these two teams played. Memphis State made two or three three-point goals early in that game and uh, just totally took control of it. Gibson hasn't shot up that well from three-point range this year, shooting 27%, but he buried that one, and it's 3 nothing Tigers. It seems like when they need a big three-point goal, he's the one that takes it, and usually he makes it. In his own defense, Memphis State was in. Elliot Perry dropping back in the lane. And LeBradford Smith going to the bucket. Well, the inner zone. I saw Perry back in the lane and thought they were in a zone. Well, what happens is that uh, anytime uh, Memphis State is in the man-to-man -man defense, they drop back as much as possible. They're going to get LeBradford Smith with the charge. They drop back as much as possible to help out on the inside. You have a guy like a Purvis Ellison, and no one guy is going to stop him by itself. The charge on LeBradford Smith, his first foul. Elliot Perry, Keith Williams guarding him, giving him some room out there. Cheyenne Gibson, LeBradford Smith with him. Ellison has Ballard. Kimbrough is on Douglas. That leaves Kenny Payne on Ernest Smith inside. Ballard, Douglas. Now Ballard a lot of times will serve as a pressure release against the defense. Ballard's going to take the shot. That's a little bit unusual for him, and Ernest Smith is going to be called for the push. Barney Smith, he's so lively up under the basket. Uh, he and Kenny Payne trying to get position for that rebound. He pushed off a little bit. When Ernest Smith becomes a better shooter, he's going to be the package, isn't he? He is. He's 6'5", uh, 6'6". Uh, six, six, six. He uh, he's quick enough to move out there and play the guard. He'll have to work on his ball handling some, but I think ultimately he'll be a better guard than uh, the small forward. He's strong, quick, good leaper. Keith Williams against Elliott Perry. Ellison, top of the circle. Ballard with him. LeBradford Smith. From Memphis State, the man-to-man -man defense is uh, very aggressive. Of course, they play that way all the time. Ball kicked as it comes inside. That's going to reset the shot clock. Louisville had used up 30 seconds of the shot clock, and now it gets reset off the kick. See Denny Crum up pointing out uh, directions to his team, and he knows it's important for this team to get off to a good start. He remembers that 24-0 start uh, about a month ago. Well, they played over two minutes without a point here today. Keith Williams tries to change that. Kent. And Kenny Payne does off the rebound. It was tipped first by Memphis State, but Payne picked it up and scored, and it's 3 2 Memphis State. Ernest Smith, Ellison with a block. His 81st block of the year. Douglas recovers. Ernest Smith gets it back to Elliott Perry. Now yeah, look for Perry to take control right now. His team a little bit out of control. They need a good shot right here. He's the guy that will get them lined up and make sure that they get that good shot. Cheyenne Gibson to Rodney Douglas. Douglas off the lane. And now we have a whistle void and a three-second violation. Not a call you see often these years. These well, you know, you're right, Fred, but Ernest Smith was just camped out in the lane that time. He thought Douglas was going to shoot the ball that time, and he just uh, positioned himself down there, and he was in there for over three seconds. Now Louisville with a chance to go in front. We're just underway with the first semifinal game at the Metro Conference Tournament in Columbia, South Carolina. Second game today, South Carolina and Florida State. Kimbrough to Ellison. 
looked like he wanted to take the shot right there. Ballard with him. Bradford Smith pumps one up. Oh, the tip by Kenny Payne. He has got two offensive stickbacks. He's really turned into a good offensive rebounder, Fred. He loves to be down there around the basket, and he's playing with a lot of confidence now. Ernest Smith, I think with a lot. Yes. Jack, I think this year, Kenny Payne has become the player Louisville has been waiting for. Well, they've been waiting, and they've waited patiently. Denny Crum has allowed Kenny Payne the time. A lot of coaches would have given up on a player because he really hasn't been consistent up until this season. Came out of high school with a reputation as a great shooter. Didn't shoot it well. This year he has. 51% overall, 44% from three-point range. Steele, Elliott Perry against LeBradford. Perry's reaction after that after that play he just said hey you got the block but I accomplished what I wanted I got the foul look at the uh, anticipation right here by Elliot Perry you're gonna see LeBradford Smith watch him time in this block you know he's gonna get it and so does Elliot Perry but he uses his body well gets between the defense and the ball and draws the foul he knows that the block is coming so LeBradford Smith draws the first back oh Oh, now they're three on one the other way in Florida in this Adams. Oh, boy. But we saw great defense on both ends, Fred. And then the time before when you saw the guys diving on the floor for the loose ball, that tells you how much this game means to both teams. Boy, Keith Williams did a great job of breaking up the break, but then Louisville couldn't convert it to the other end. Time out here, 15-59 left at that part. Memphis up by one. We have 15-59 left in the first half. Well, I tell you what, when you see four coming at you, four and one on the break, <laughs> it'll put your heart in your throat for a moment, but Keith Williams handled it so well. Well, he stayed right in there and played it up uh, as best as you can play it. Uh, neither team shooting it well, as I said. Memphis stayed only one of four from the field, and that was a three-pointer by Keith Gibson, uh, excuse me, by Cheyenne Gibson. Uh, the Cardinals only two of five for 40%. I guess on the other hand, Jack, when it's four on one against you, there's not too much to worry about, really. You just do what you can. Well, you stand back there, and the best thing, uh, one thing you'd like to try to do is to draw a charge, and he stood his ground and would have drawn the charge had he not come up with the steal, but uh, those hands very quick and came up with it. Ernest Smith, second time he's been called for traveling. All comes back to Louisville. Cardinals down one. Well, you can bet that Smith is looking over his shoulder every time he gets the ball down there and knocked one of his shots out of there, and uh, he has to be concerned about that. Kimbrough, Purvis Ellison, number three all-time in the NCAA in blocks. Of course, he's leading the Metro Conference in that uh, career, over his career in that category. He hasn't had a shot in this ball game. Look for him to go down low to him. Sullivan takes it right inside to him. Right away. And it's going to result in a three-point opportunity. Well, you can only uh, go the other way away from him so many times. You know eventually they're going to have to come to Purvis Ellison. And uh, Sullivan gets the ball down on the baseline. Almost traveled. Did a good job of not raising his pivot foot up. And uh, there's the foul right there. Douglas comes over to try to block Ellison's shot. He'll get a chance for the three-point play. Ballard has been guarding Ellison. Wound up on Edward Sullivan. And Rodney Douglas took Ellison and, drew and called, was called for the foul. Three points now for Purvis Ellison. Sean Gibson stepped on the end line. He was down there by himself. No one uh, for the Cardinal team realized he was back there, but uh, he stepped out of bounds. Keith Williams. Foot moving the lane. It's knocked loose. Saved by Kimbrough. Now the lob to Ellison. A little bit over his head. Ellison trying to save it. And it's picked off now by Memphis State. Taken right back by Everett Sullivan. Inside to Keith Williams. He's fouled by Sean Gibson. Teams just a little bit more. Look at Larry Fitch. You think he's upset on the sideline? Well, both teams handling the ball rather sloppily right now. Well, but he is really upset about something down there. He's saying his foot. One of his guys got hit across the arm, and well, they have to calm him down before he gets a technical foul. He doesn't often get that upset. No, he really doesn't. Coaches trying to calm him down. It's Tim Morgan, one of the assistants. Dave Loose on the other side of him. Tim Morgan trying to calm him down. Keith Williams misses the free throw. They both miss, and Ballard controls the rebound. We want to inform our viewers that this telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Sports and Entertainment. Well, 
we're used to the video or audio portions of this program without the written permission of Raycom Sports and Entertainment is forbidden. All right, Purvis Ellison uh, hurt right here. You'll see on the replay that Chad Gibson is going to stick his forearm right in the face of Purvis Ellison as he goes up for this shot. And uh, that's pretty much what you have to do when you're going against a shot blocker. You have to go up there and take the ball to the basket. You shoot that fall away shot and you're going to get it blocked. But uh, Gibson, give him credit, he did what he had to do that time. He might have gotten away with an offensive foul, but that's the way you take the ball to a shot blocker. Felton Spencer's in the lineup now. Keith Williams sits down. Ellison's going to stay in the ballgame. You really have to go right, right at him, don't you, and take that arm span away from him. Yes, you do, and, and we've seen so far that he does such a good job of uh, coming over with the weak side defensive help. Brett Munt's coming into the basketball game, and Curtis Smith is going to go out. But talking back uh, about Purvis Ellison, he does a good job of coming over from the weak side, and uh, that's where he gets a lot of his block shots. Shot blockers are something like home run hitters, Jack. You can't let them get their arms extended on yours. They're going to hurt you. Well, you just can't let them get set up, get those feet in position to get up there and get that block shot. And you have to use your body more times than not to oh, watch out. 7-7 tie and almost had the basketball is, is over our head, though. That's really a bad pass to declare the announcers. I saw it coming, and it just sailed right over top of our heads. Cheyenne Gibson. Elliot Perry. 14-14 left in the first half here. Game one, the semifinal round at the Metro Conference Tournament of the ball. Mishandled inside. Picked off by Everett Sullivan for Louisville. Look at him come through the traffic with it. He's going to go all the way. Oh, what a move. What a job that time by the freshman. Louisville up by two. Douglas, Martin Spencer out with him. They go inside to Brett Mutt. There's that little baby left-handed hook that he loves to shoot. Well, he does like that shot, Fred, and uh, he doesn't do a whole lot when he catches the ball down there. He doesn't have a, have a lot of ability offensively, but the few things that he does, like that jump hook, he does very well. He'll shoot that one in the turnaround jumper. 9-9 nine, nine tie. Steal. Perry and Sullivan to Gibson. Foul in the basket doesn't go. Now, that is the way to handle the, uh, the fast break, Fred. The time before, Memphis State didn't do a good job at all of running the fast break, and uh, that's when Keith Williams got back with the steal. Here's that defense that I say they drop back in there, and here's the best two-on-one that I've seen in a while. They just keep con continue to pass the ball back and forth, goes up for the shot, draws the charge, the foul. He doesn't get the basket, but he will get two free throws. Just hit two free throws. He has five points a day. Gibson sixth. There's Larry Finch. Who's ever met more to Memphis State basketball than Larry Finch? In his third year as a coach, at the age of 38, he's won 67 games. And in his years there as a player, an assistant coach, and a head coach, they are 288 and 108. He took him to the Final Four as a player. And he's going to do it someday as a head coach. Fred, and one thing that's even more impressive than that, I think, is that he has the seven players that have graduated during his time uh, that have left as seniors all seven of them will graduate and I think that is even more important than uh, some of the accomplishments on the floor and I think Gina Pickens who is the uh, uh, the girl who is in charge of the lady I should say that's in charge of their academics there at Memphis State gets a lot of credit for that but Larry Finch brought that also he's something 38 years old, he's already won 20 games three times in three tries. Right. Got a hand on the shot inside. Here's Memphis State. Up by two. Oh, stick. Oh, look at Elliot Perry. <laughs> he did a triple spin in celebration. I love the reaction. I love the emotion that both of these teams are playing with. Watch this stutter step right here to get Sullivan lean in the wrong way. There's the hit across the arm. Well, now watch this reaction. <laughs> Isn't that great? You just have to love that reaction. Does he play with fire or does he play with fire? The foul was on Kenny Payne his first. Elliot Perry has four points. Two for two at the line today. Memphis State leads by five. 12-54 left in the first half. I like to watch these two teams play, Fred. They really get after each other. Play hard the entire 40 minutes. Kenny Payne fires it to Purvis Ellison. 
And we've got a three-second violation. Oh, two times in one game. That's highly unusual. Yeah. Felton Spencer that time got camped under the basket. You kind of understand that. When the ball comes to Purvis Ellison in the lane anywhere, you have to kind of think in terms of shot, I guess. Well, I, I would, definitely. Anytime Purvis gets it in there, he's got such good touch from 15 feet on in that uh, you just look for him to shoot it when he catches it there. You know, and the other thing, Jack, is you're probably not very conscious of the call right now. They haven't been making that three-second call very much the last two or three years in college basketball. And... Well, and you see players more and more just pushing it to the limit and standing there longer and longer and just kind of waiting to see if the officials are going to call it. Elliot Perry made a couple of moves on Sullivan, took him baseline, and Purvis Ellison made him change his shot. Now Perry fouls him. Well, not a good shot that time by uh, Elliot Perry, and he knows it more than anybody, and that's the reason why he reached in that time and committed the foul. Here he is. Of course, Sullivan is at least five inches taller than him, and maybe six, and there's the reach in right there, just frustrated that time that he missed that shot. And Lori Finch is going to talk to him a little bit, takes him out of the game, lets him think about it. Tony Madlock, a freshman guard in for Memphis State. Four minutes left in the first half. Memphis State by five. Everett Sullivan squares up on the baseline. This is Dutton. Spencer takes it up strongly. Gets it. He's been fouled. Well, you count it. The Cardinals, they've done so many things well this year and you've seen so many great things from him but I think probably the biggest story of all is the improvement of this guy right here uh, Felton Spencer he, he, he's so aggressive down there and only one game this season has he not shown up to play and, and that is a big accomplish for, accomplishment for this young man Felton Spencer we have a timeout here 1152 left in our first half and Memphis State now leading Louisville 14 to 12 it's about what he has to do to beat Memphis State here this afternoon at the moment is Memphis State up by two at 14 to 12. Tony Madlock to Munt. Deep in the corner, Douglas. I don't know he'll get Douglas in the offense yet. Cheyenne Gibson, Madlock, boy, Munt, and Spencer really tangling down in the lane. Madlock puts up a shot, rebounded by Purvis Ellison, and he went over Madlock, but it's stolen back by Ernest Smith. The Madlock, Ellison's there. Dish back to Ernest Smith, and he jumped. jumping ability. Belton Spencer kicks it back to Keith Williams. Loose along the baseline. Keith Williams buries one. He has three points. Well, if he can make that jump shot right there, Fred, he will really be an asset to this uh, Cardinal basketball team. Of course, he does a good job of running the show, but he needs to be more consistent on that jump shot. This shot is in and out. Belton Spencer. Keith Williams now for Louisville. Cardinals down by two. Sean Gibson got a hand on it. Boy, this Memphis State gets a, team gets a lot of steals. Well, they're not a real big team, so they have to take advantage of their quickness, and that's the reason why you see so many times Tony that they get their hands on the ball and they come up with a lot of steals. You see Purvis Ellison going to the bench. Elliott Perry leads the Metro with 63 steals. Cheyenne Gibson and Rodney Douglas each have 55. Gang of thieves. Well, I tell you what, and, and like I say, they they just simply take advantage of the quickness. Of course, you know that uh, Elliot Perry is is quick, but Gibson, although he is a quick player, uh, doesn't really look all that quick at times. But those hands always move. Yeah, you know, what they've been doing lately, as you see, Tony Matlock stick the jump shot. Matlock's first two points. They've been a little bit like Oklahoma. They'll slap that press on you. At some point, they get you in a frenzy and hit you with about an 8 to 10 point burst. Right. They, they will just lull you into thinking you can handle it very easily. And then all of a sudden, they turn up the pressure. And they come up with three or four steals. And they make made a run on you before you know it. Tony Kimbrough pulls up, shoots. Rolls around the left. And Spencer's going to be called for over the back. He was behind Bretman. And Spencer draws his first foul. Well, but Spencer, give him credit. He's in there giving the effort right now. And uh, you're going to see him working hard to get rebounding position down there. And, but Munt's going to do a good job of getting his body on him. There he is coming over the back. Almost got away with that. Denny Crum. Diane Gibson now comes out of the ball game to catch a breather. Elliot Perry back in. Tony Medlock for the basketball for Memphis State with 10.04 left in the first half. Keith Williams picks up Tony Madlock. Douglas, Ernest Smith, William Perry. I think with uh, Purvis Ellison out of the lineup, I think this would be a good opportunity for Memphis State to try to work that ball down low. Well, Martin and Felton Spencer really tangled up down low. Now Madlock has it blocked and knocked out of there. 
And they've got Kenny, Kenny Payne all alone. Oh, easy dunk. Six for Kenny Payne. Well, Payne uh, was playing defense in the corner when that shot went up. But uh, once again, I think this would be a good time for Memphis State to work that ball around and try to get Grant Mutt down low or to get the ball to Ernie Smith down there and let them get some easy opportunities. Smith and Kimbrough tackling. And Kimbrough threw a little bit of an elbow in there. Ernest Smith kind of slapped his arm back. And the officials very quickly put a stop to it. Ernest Smith saying to one of the officials, I'm all right. There's Curtis on the bench. Uh, I don't expect to see Purvis Ellison sitting on the sideline very long in this, uh, very much longer. He's been out for a couple minutes. He's going to get a breather. You'll see him back in the lineup here pretty quickly. In fact, what a magnificent player Purvis Ellison has been, and what a great demeanor on the court. I can't think of anybody who's been better for college basketball in his career than Purvis Ellison. Well, he has accomplished so much, and we talked so much about the fact that he uh, is one of the top shot blockers in the nation. Of course, he leads the Metro Conference in that category over his career and there he is coming up off the bench I didn't think we'd see him sitting there uh, very long but just a, a super individual a, a good personality he, he uh, is always willing to give his time to the kids around the community of, uh, of Louisville and uh, you can't ask more of a young man than that and you know he's kind of blossomed this year he's always been maybe a little bit bashful but this year he's coming over to us talking to us well I, I think he understands as uh, you know, the recognition comes, you have to be a little bit more outgoing, have a little bit more personality, and be a little bit more willing to uh, spend time with uh, the media and other people. I've never seen him get mad or do anything wrong on a basketball court. He's just been an exemplary player and citizen. When he had a chance to do that earlier in this ball game because Shine Gibson gave him a forearm right in the face. Ellison just made a pretty good pass that Spencer has fouled as the ball comes inside. Tony Madlock has whistled for the personal foul. Well, I, still, Madlock. I still think the defense of Memphis State is playing right now. Their man-to-man -man defense has just been tremendous in this basketball game. Here it is nine minutes to go, and they've only given up 16 points. So uh, you know your defense is playing well against a, car, a, a team that is as explosive as the Cardinals are. Remember the last time they played again, the Memphis State got Louisville down 24 to nothing, so... Louisville off to a much better start here today. You knew that was not going to happen again. That's one of those games that happened once in a lifetime. I still don't believe it happened that time. Kimbrough, Keith Williams, three-point try misses. Douglas Perry to Gibson. Elliot Perry goes for three. Dalton Spencer with the rebound. LeBradford Smith, he's going to push it. Got it in a circle and dumps it off to Keith Williams on the baseline. The shot good. Williams just hung up in the air that time to the defense adjusted and he was able to get that shot off. 2018 Memphis State, 822 left in the first half. Brett Mutt will short with a try. Kimbo has the rebound to Keith Williams. Ellison's up there, so is LeBradford. Ellison turned and looked in at Belton Spencer and Douglas contesting the pass. He's going to save it. Nicely to Elliot Perry to Cheyenne Gibson and he's fouled by Tony Kimbo. Rodney Douglas came up with a steal. Well, every time you think the Cardinals are going to get control of the game and start making some things happen, Memphis State comes up with a big defensive play. Sean Gibson is going to get the ball in the uh, out court in, on the outlet right there, and Kimbrough is going to come over from the weak side and get called with the foul. Memphis State, 9 of 9 from the free throw line. That's one reason why they're up by two points. Louisville has been to the line three times. Need one. Need two, excuse me. Cheyenne Gibson. shooter from out there. He's two of two from three-point range. Thomas Ellison turns and scores. He has five. The jacket 19 feet 9 inches when they leave you completely alone. That's not a tough shot. It's not a tough shot at all. Giant Gibson in traffic to Ernest Smith. And Ellison might have had a hand on that shot. Ernest Smith able to get it back. 
Deflected now by Keith Williams. It's out of bounds to Memphis State. Well, that's what Curtis Ellis gives you down there. He made uh, Ernest Smith change his shot up, and uh, that's the shot that Smith doesn't miss very often. Time out here, 7-11 left in first half action. Memphis State leading Louisville by five. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. Travel arranged through the NFL Citibank Visa card. Now carry the card of your favorite team and earn free NFL. State handling the inbounds pass. Gets it to Elliot Perry. Gibson comes off a McLean screen. The shot partially blocked. But Memphis State gets it back. Well, before that shot, Memphis State shooting only 32% from the field. Six of 19. The Cardinals nine of 17. So they're shooting the ball pretty well, but they haven't gone to the free throw line, but only four times where Memphis State has shot, uh, has taken 11 free throws, and they've made all 11 of them. Elliot Perry behind Munt watches a three that doesn't fall for him, and Kimbrough brings the rebound down for Louisville. Up they come to Purvis Ellison. Looks in the lane. Nothing there, but he's going to take a drive now. Nice drop pass in there to Kenny Payne. Well, he does so many things well, Curtis Ellison. Well, you, when he comes in the lane, you got to go to him. Yeah, you have to. You know that uh, if you don't, he's going to score. But uh, that time, he just dropped it off. And I think he still could have taken that, uh, that shot onto the basket. He's very unselfish also. Kenny Payne has eight points in this game. In the first game between these two teams, Payne scored 28 points and had 11 rebounds. So he's had big days before against Memphis State. Well, of course, uh, in that ball game, he started. And in the games that he has started this season, he uh, has averaged 14 points a game. So... He likes that starting role. They call a foul on Ronald McLean, and I think they got him for an elbow. When he came out of the lane, Kimbrough had him pretty well tangled up. He got a little bit frustrated. He was trying to dribble the ball and hold off Kimbrough and got an elbow out and was called for the foul. Right, he pushed off just a little bit, but he is getting more and more playing time for Memphis State and doing a good job. Pretty good shooter and brings some size to the floor for Memphis State. Ronald McLean is 6'8", just a sophomore. Ellison, turnaround shot won't go. Elliot Perry comes away with the rebound. Dish to Gibson. Kimbrough hauls it down. Up court quickly to Kenny Payne. Oh, he got it to Purvis Ellison for the reverse layup. Bye. Perry was right there. He was there and uh, almost came up with the steal, but Purvis Ellison running the floor that time. Brett Munn is trying to guard him, and Ellison a lot quicker just simply beat him down the floor. 25-24, Memphis State that time. Ellison overplayed Munn, and Munn took advantage of the left-handed shot. He yeah. is for Using that wide body. Ellison got in front of him with Munn. Took it up and scored. Three-point lead to Memphis State. Kimbrough with a turnaround shot. Ellison's right there, and it lost it out of bounds. It'll be Memphis State basketball with 507 left in the first half. Well, if I was the Cardinals, I would go to every time down for the next two or three minutes. I'd get the ball to Purvis Ellison and just let him work down low. He is so crafty once he once he catches the ball down there, as we saw the time before when he didn't score the points, but he dumped it off to uh, Kenny Payne for an easy two. You see Kimbrough coming out of the game now. Gonna catch a little breather. Curry with the basketball, the Bradford Smith with him. Cornelius Holden will check in for Louisville. John McLaughlin from Memphis State. There's Ballard going right at Henry Sullivan, the shot no good. Kenny Payne with the rebound. Here come the Cardinals down three. Payne, Tellison, loose on the baseline. Good. I would do that, Fred, as, as often as I could. I would get him the ball and just let him work. Nine points now for Curtis Ellison. One point lead, Memphis State, 428 left in the first half. Louisville's turned it up a notch defensively. Well, they have. They picked up the pressure some. They're forcing the turnovers, and they're going down and scoring the easy points. Keith Williams. Ballard and Kenny Payne handle is going to be called a jump ball. The arrow belongs to Memphis State. Now the substitutions. Cornelius holding for Louisville. Keith Williams out. Felton Spencer coming in for Louisville. Purvis Ellison will go to the bench. John McLaughlin is out. And John McLaughlin on the floor for the first time today for Memphis State. He's a good shooter. I wonder if Purvis is tired or if he's injured. Uh, you know, he set out a couple minutes earlier. It looks a little bit winded to me. Uh, I don't know if he, he might have the flu, might be a little sick or something. But uh, he's right now starting to work. I'm surprised he's not in there. 409 left in the first half. Purvis only has one foul, so that's not a problem. And now, whistle blowing, and a foul is called. It's going to be on McLaughlin. And once again, he just lowered his shoulder and tried to clear the defense out, as we saw Ronald McLean do uh, a minute or so ago. It's 
been a good matchup so far today. Memphis State's led by as many as five. Louisville by two. It's one point lead to Memphis State at the moment with 4-0-4 left in the first half. No strangers, these teams. They know about everything there is to know about one another. Third matchup this year. The two teams together have won 10 of the previous 13 Metro Conference Tournament. Louisville has won six, Memphis State four, Cincinnati has won two, and Virginia Tech won. Sullivan's shot won't quite fall over the rim for him, but he's fouled. Steve Ballard picks up the foul. Larry Finch still working the officials. Uh, and right now giving uh, some instructions to Cheyenne Gibson. For the Cardinals, Edward Sullivan shooting two. Yeah, you know, Larry Finch is a little bit of a rarity. He was an absolutely great player who understands that not everyone is. Well, he understands that, and I think that's one thing that makes him a, an, an effective basketball coach is because he understands that it takes a, a certain amount of great players and then some players who are role players that can come in and, and do the job uh, and not score points to make you successful. Elliot Perry. Mutt. Ballard goes up. And he's fouled. Jack, I'd like to go back to that point about Larry Finch when we get the opportunity. There's Denny Crum. My point being that sometimes things come so easily to great players that they expect everybody else to be able to do it, too. They don't understand the hard work, and, and he's just not like that. And very seldom you see uh, guys who are great basketball players go on and become great uh, coaches because of the fact that uh, he, they sometimes expect everyone to be as good as they were, and it's just simply not true, especially when you are, were as successful a player as Larry Finch was. Denny Crum, on the other hand, I don't think you call him a great player. He was a college player played in the program a strong one but Memphis State they haven't missed a free throw yet 12 of 12 and this guy right here has really worked on his free throw shooting and if you look at his statistics as I jinx him that time 47.8% uh, from the free throw line you would think how is that an improvement but he has been more consistent from the line than in the past Ballard rebounds LeBradford Smith miss Memphis State by two now 310 left in the first half Cheyenne Gibson, John McLaughlin, fires it in the late to Mutt. Felton Spencer had a hand on his hip, and Mutt turns and misses this time, and now Elliot Perry called for a foul as they come out on the break. Perry's whistled for his second foul. Oh, and Larry Finch up, and uh, what he is upset about right now is that uh, Elliot Perry picked up his second personal foul in a situation where he, he shouldn't have. He knows how important it is to have Perry in the basketball game, and uh, he is upset with the fact that he got he got the foul, but more upset with the, he, he just didn't use his mind, use his uh, head, and picked up a useless foul. That's his second foul, so now they're going to have to take Perry out of there. He'll have to sit down the last three minutes. Ellison back in, and Cornelius holding out. So Bradford Smith, third point. LeBradford Smith gets them both. Time out here. We have three minutes and two seconds left in our first half. This is some ball game. Now, Memphis State and Louisville tied at 28 all. Semifinal action of the Metro Tournament. Houston, who is uh, Mr. Basketball candidate in the state of Kentucky next season, and um, uh, has a good chance of getting that honor. A great basketball player. His high school team, though, did get beat, beat out in their attempt to. Uh, defend their state state tournament title so a um, little bit disappointing that way but his son is a great basketball player I've heard great things predicted for him and you know a lot of times you have to recruit the moms I'm glad Wade was able to sell it on the idea right <laughs> Cheyenne Gibson 235 left in first half action here 28 28 tie Gibson picks up the dribble might be in trouble but Madlock comes over to help him well, the Cardinals, they've really picked up the pressure defensively and missed the state. Of course, with Elliott Perry on the bench, they're struggling trying to get some offense going. They knocked two consecutive passes loose inside. Still Memphis State ball, but now only three seconds on the shot clock, Jack, when they throw it in bounds. Are they going to reset it? They'll reset yeah, it. Yeah, they're resetting it. 
Oh, they're going to, yeah, to five seconds, and they'll have five seconds to get that shot off. They have to put five on the clock. It doesn't go back to 45 unless it's a shot or a kick. Oh, what a shot. <laughs> Tony Matlock got it done. I think that's, that, that's what you call throwing up a prayer and having it answered. 30-28 Memphis State, 208 left in the first half. to get it right back down there to Purvis Ellison as much as possible and give him the opportunity to work. You're a great coach. <laughs> it's easy when you have a guy like that. It, it makes it real easy. Hey, I can coach. Get the ball to Purvis. <laughs> Don't care how you do it. Cheyenne Gibson comes right back and nails one. All right, Memphis State keeps on answering uh, Purvis Ellison with 11 points so far, but the Cardinals uh, just can't seem to get over the hump. Cheyenne Gibson has 13 points already in this game. His season high is 19. Ellison dropped it, saved it, now stolen away by Tony Madlock. Everett Sullivan trying to catch him, but can't. And a good decision by Sullivan to just let, uh, let him go on in and have that shot. Four-point lead, Memphis State. A minute 11 left in the first half. Madlock has come off the bench to score six points. Brett Munt came off the bench to score four, so the Memphis State bench has contributed strongly. They have 10 to the 34 points. Purvis Ellison turns, shoots over Ballard. Shot misses. Felton Spencer's tip won't go. Now Ballard has the rebound. Say so he brings that to the ball club every day. He's not a big scorer, but Ballard is a strong rebounder. He's led him in rebounding half their games this year. He is a good rebounder, and he doesn't make many mistakes. Gibson. Purvis Ellison, look how quickly he found Payne on the outlet pass. Now back to Spencer. Uh, good job by Felton Spencer that time running the floor. Once again, Brett Munt, he's just simply, they're just simply beating Brett Munt down the floor. Seven footer out running that time, Felton Spencer. 20 seconds left in the first half. Memphis State with the ball, two point lead and no shot clock, it's off. This has been a good first half of basketball. Madlock. Right, he traveled, yes. Good call by the official, changed his, his pivot foot, the official right on top of the play. Made a good call. Nine seconds left in the first half, and now Louisville is going to get an opportunity to tie this thing. They're bringing Rodney Douglas back in for defensive purposes here. The Cardinals haven't had a lead in this basketball game period since 14:02 in the first half. It was 9-7 to at that point. Memphis State has taken control. Now we have a tie. Keith Williams with a big shot from the top of the key. So Keith Williams gets it tied. He has seven points. And 20 minutes of basketball decide absolutely nothing between these two old rivals. There's Denny Crum walking off. Keith Williams just put his club in the tie with a jump shot from above the circle. 34-34 tie at halftime here. This is game one of the semifinal round with South Carolina and Florida State coming up next. Halftime of game one. The do what that he simply puts the ball in the basket. And Medlock came in off the bench also to help out Memphis State an awful lot. This is when time was running out on the shot clock. He had to pretty much throw one up, and he got that one to go down. So Medlock and Munt came off the bench, actually, to get Memphis State 10 points between them in the first half. Larry Finch got some strong help off his bench. Both got ball clubs playing very well now. We're at halftime. They split the regular season meetings, and nothing decided so far in the first half of this one. 34-34 at halftime. Memphis State and Louisville. Again, the semifinal round of the Metro... Team points, Matlock off the bench, got six. Elliot Perry sort of quiet with five. Today's halftime stats were brought to you by Gillette. We're set to go, second half action. Keith Williams, as Louisville tries to break on top here. I think it's uh, going to be important for, it, for Elliot Perry to get involved in the game here very quickly here in the second half. He only had five points in the first half, and he is this team's leading scorer, so he's going to have to become more effective offensively. Rodney Douglas blocked a shot from Memphis State to get him started, and Gibson loads one up off the baseline. And he shoot that one high over the uh, outstretched arms of uh, Purvis Ellison and got that one to go. You've heard of the rainbows? He shot that one over the rainbow. That was a Dorothy in the land of Oz shot. 36-34. Memphis State by two, and Ernest Smith is called for a personal foul. His second. 
Well, Smith trying to get around uh, front down low and not let Kimbrough catch the ball posting up on the low post and uh, just got him across the arm as he reached in to try to knock that one away. Kenny Payne. Keith Williams. Race for the basketball. It's going to be Louisville ball. Well, I think had uh, Elliot Perry just let that one go, it would have been over and back because no one for the Memphis State team touched it. He tried to pick it up to go for an easy two. Keith Williams did a good job of shielding him off and not letting, letting him do that. Saw Denny Crum had taken off his sport coat. But Bradford Smith picks up his six point. Game tied at 36. Well, Ballard is, doesn't have the moves offensively as if he did. He would uh, be a whole lot more effective because Curtis Ellison just letting him catch the ball down low. Williams got a hand on Ernest Smith's shot. Smith able to recover it in the corner. Memphis State very patient right now, trying to work the ball around and get good shots. You see Ellison, though, playing down behind Ballard on the low post, uh, just uh, daring him to shoot the basketball. Ernest Smith wants the shot, takes it, and it's around and in and good. I think he shot that between the arm of Marcus Ellison and uh, Tony Kimbrough, who was guarding him on the other side. Six points for Ernest Smith. Memphis State by two. Down low, Kimbrough with a turnaround jumper. Off the front of the rim. Ernest Smith hooks the pass to Gibson. Back to Ernest Smith. And he missed the jam, and the Bradford Smith's going the other way with Perry chasing. And he didn't try to jam it. Well, he did the right thing that time. A little bit out of control, so he elected to just lay the ball in over the rim. Uh, Smith on the other end, he tried to do what he does best, and that is dunk the basketball, and the ball hit the back of the rim. Boy, look at Ernest Smith and Kimbrough battle in the lane for position. And now they're going to get Tony Kimbrough for the foul. Well, they finally got him. Well, they were really going at each other down there. And, well, Larry Finch upset, and he should be, because I thought both of those guys, something needed to be called in that situation. When you have two guys going at each other that way, uh, someone could very easily get, get, uh, get hurt in that situation. You're going to see Ernest Smith take the ball to the basket, just hits the back of the rim. The Cardinals doing a good job defensively now. LeBradford Smith just simply lays it over the rim because he didn't have real good control of the basketball. We've talked about long rebounds this year because of the three-point shot. That was an extremely long rebound because of a point-blank shot. <laughs> but missed. Ballard, uh, excuse me, Rodney Douglas handling the basketball right there. He hasn't scored in this basketball game and has only had one shot here in this game. Rodney Douglas averaging 11 points a ball game, a 6'6 senior, and a pretty good shooter. Well, Kimbrough is really playing tough man to man defense down low. Kimbrough and Ballard now are all tangled up down in there. Cheyenne Gibson. Ellison was right there to send it back. So you remember States uh, and, and, and the Cardinals, you have to give them credit. They've really picked up the pressure defensively. Ellison blocked the goaltending call on Ernest Smith. Give Purvis Ellison his 13th point of the day. Well, and Larry Fitch, uh, highly upset with this team right now. That's the first Cardinal lead since about four minute, 14 minutes in the first half. Elliot Perry, long jumper short. Ellison had it. So a few times you ever see him not get the ball clean like he rolled off his fingertips. Well, usually when he has that good a rebounding position, uh, he's like a vacuum cleaner. He just sucks everything up down low. Jack, we've seen him play for four years. I think I can remember maybe twice when he's mishandled a pass that came inside to him. He has absolutely great hands. Douglas, Ernest Smith. Ballard. Foul called on Purvis Ellison. That's and, his second. And Ballard just simply needs to continue to battle down low as he is, as he's doing right now. He's going to get one of those shots to drop. He just simply hasn't been fortunate enough to get the roll. You're going to see him. Uh, Smith is going to shoot the air ball here. Just doesn't get anything. And of course, that's Purvis Ellison part of that because uh, Smith looking over his shoulder for Ellison to come for the block. I don't know if you caught it or not, but Larry Finch had Elliot Perry over on the side talking to him. 
and he sent him back out to play with a whack on the seat of the pants and looked like he hit a golf ball. He launched Elliot Perry when he hit him over there. Well, of course, El uh, Elliot Perry, not a big guy at all, so it wouldn't take a whole lot uh, when a guy size of Larry French gives him a little whack. But uh, uh, he knows that Elliot Perry needs to become more involved in this basketball game, and uh, Larry French doing everything he can to get Elliot Perry a little bit more mentally involved in this basketball game. Cheyenne Gibson now called for the foul. His second. There's Larry Finch. Dave Lewis sitting right behind him there. We'll show you Dave Lewis' foot in a moment. He has a broken foot. He stepped on one of the players demonstrating something in practice and broke his foot. He said it wasn't a good... De there it is. There's Dave Lewis. He said it wasn't the best demonstration I've ever done. I, I, I think not. <laughs> oh, he's a nice fella and a good coach. Keith Williams, 16 minutes left in this game. 40-40. Curtis Ellison with the ball deflected as it came inside. Cheyenne Gibson, Elliot Perry, three. Uh, you know it's got to go. And, and uh, boy, you saw the reaction of the Memphis State bench. I don't know if you did or not, but uh, everyone just got up <laughs> because all of them know that Elliot Perry is very vital to the success of this basketball team. Elliot Perry has eight points now, and Memphis State leads by three. Long way to go. 15-26 left in the game to be exact. Keith Williams traveled. He passed up a shot as Elliot Perry made a run at it. Yeah, should have taken that jump shot. And now we have a timeout taken here in Columbia, South Carolina. This is semifinal action at the Metro Conference postseason tournament. South Carolina, Florida State up next right now. Lewis oh, this Lewis. is the first time I've seen this one, though. The <laughs> over the head, <laughs> behind the back pass to Keith Williams. Of course, they didn't get the shot because uh, Keith Williams took a step, one too many steps. Ball batted around in front of the Louisville bench, and it's out of bounds to Memphis State. Well, that raises a question now. Does Purvis have eyes in the back of his head, too? <laughs> now he has great court sense. He has uh, some kind of advantage he, to be that much better than everyone else on the floor. Douglas. Well, Kimbrough, you just have to get him. He's hooking his arm around, and... Well, he's really playing aggressively down there, but he's hooking that arm around the offensive player on the low post, and uh, he's been able to get away with that, but, uh, you know, that time he just got caught. He's doing a good job defensively, though. He's got his hands full because he takes the toughest player posting up down low for Memphis State. Felton Spencer now replaces Kimbrough. That's his fourth foul. Kimbrough hasn't scored today. We talked in a pregame, Jack, about how Kimbrough and Keith Williams and LeBradford needed to give Louisville something today. Kimbrough hasn't been able to score yet. Now he's out of the game with four fouls. Well, fortunately for the Cardinals, the other two guys have because LeBradford Smith has played a good floor game even though he hasn't scored a lot of points and Keith Williams also has hit some big shots. Well, they ran away and left Cheyenne Gibson to live to tell about it as Gibson missed the shot. And LeBradford makes a run at the other end. If the baskets were scored, I don't know if they'll count it. I don't think so. Well, I don't think they should, but foul. I do think it was the proper call. I think the foul occurred out on the floor. They're going to give him the basket. Count it. Yes, they will. So he will get one free throw. And, well, he looked like he was still on the ground when the contact occurred, but he gets credit for it and look at the reaction of Larry Finch. He just simply can't believe it. Game tied again. Foul in the lane. Action heating up here. That time they got Felton Spencer, his second foul. Well, you just saw uh, Memphis State run to, the, to perfection, what you call uh, free throw break so many times off of the free throw you see teams just simply take the ball out of bounds after the team makes the free throw you see them just take it out and walk it up the floor but that time Memphis State ran the free throw break where they kicked the ball up the up the sideline got the ball to Gibson down low and he just worked and uh, drew the foul on uh, Felton Spencer. Cheyenne Gibson was 16 points a day 19 is a season high and he scored him against Louisville. So he's had a couple of big games against the Cardinals. Larry Finch, third year as the head coach at Memphis State. Florida State won the regular season title at 9 and 3. Memphis State, Louisville, and South Carolina all tied for second at 8 and 4. Memphis State got the number two seed by virtue of beating Florida State twice during the regular season. 
with some blows. Foul called. Rodney Douglas. His second. Well, what you have there is Rodney Douglas at 6'6", trying to guard Curtis Ellison at 6'9", who plays like a seven-footer, and that's simply just not a good matchup for Memphis State. Look for them to bring maybe uh, Brett Munt in off the bench to try to match up with those two big frontline people for the Cardinals. Now, if you watch post play, and it gets so rough down there, I've never understood why if a guard touches a guard, it's a foul, and centers can absolutely go to war and wrestle down in the post. <laughs> That's hard to understand. Everett Sullivan, does that remind you of the three that he hit to beat Florida State in Tallahassee earlier this year? The only thing is, I think uh, the shot he took against Florida State came on the opposite side of the court, but along the baseline. 46-45, Louisville now, and Memphis State turns it over. Jack Gibbons and I will select the fourth player of the game at the conclusion of this game, so stay with us. Denny Crum and Larry Finch are working as hard as they can in front of their respective benches. That has been a tight game. Memphis State led by as many as five. Louisville by two. On the corner crowd starting to get into it. About 3,000 Cardinal fans down here for this basketball game. Between two and 3,000, so uh, they're starting to get involved in the game to try to cheer the Cardinals on. Three points, the biggest lead today for Louisville. Cheyenne Gibson. Oh, big basket by Gibson. Cheyenne Gibson. 20 points for Cheyenne Gibson now, his season high. And Keith Williams traveled with the basketball. Good full court pressure that time by Memphis State to force that turnover. Now Memphis State with a chance to go right back in front. Well, the Cardinals, they've made six of their seven field goal attempts here in the second half, so uh, obviously they're shooting the ball much better. So Cheyenne. Well, oh, Gibson, he had such good form on his jump shot. He gets that shot off very quickly. Yeah, Memphis State's doing better today than I've seen him do for a while, coming off screens and getting shots. They are using the screens down low very well. Purvis Ellison. Keith Williams going to try it from the other side. That one's off the rim. Kenny Payne tips, can't get it. Felton Spencer battling, had it. Knocked away behind by Rodney Douglas. It's out of bounds. It's going to be Memphis State basketball. Rodney Douglas battling hard in there. Well, Felton Spencer also doing a good job on the offensive boards that time. He brought the ball down behind his head and allowed the Memphis State defense to get a hand on it. Everett Sullivan has come out of the game now. Long pass to Ernest Smith. Felton Spencer, the seven-footer right back there, and Ernest very wisely decided <laughs> to hold it. Good choice. <laughs> Douglas Perry. The Bradford Smith defending Perry. Rodney Douglas against Kenny Payne. Ernest Smith against Purvis Ellison. Is he going to shoot it anyway? He is, and the clock, but a foul called on Purvis Ellison. Boy, Ernest Smith at 6'5", went right at 6'9", Purvis Ellison. Oh, but I thought Purvis Ellison on this play, and we'll see on the replay, he simply plays excellent defense right here. Watch how Smith jumps into him right here. He's going to have his hand straight up in the air. See how Smith kind of jumps into him. I think Smith got away with one that time. Hey, one thing, Purvis never bought the fake either, did he? No, he didn't. He stayed right at home. And when you have the uh, jumping ability and, and you jump as quickly as Ella, Ellison does, you can afford to just sit back there and wait for the offensive player to make that first move. Ernest Smith, 65% free throw shooter, is 6'5 freshman from Memphis. comes Brett Munn into the basketball game and I thought Larry Finch would get him in there because uh, the Cardinals with uh, Purvis Ellison and Felton Spencer both in there Spencer at seven foot Purvis, and Purvis Ellison 6'10 Memphis State simply didn't match up well with them down low Rodney Douglas has come out of the ball game Jack I have to think that both these teams are in the NCAA no matter what here today but it tells you something about pride how hard they're playing and how much a tournament championship means to them well, I tell you, if Memphis State was to, to win, go on and win this game and to win the tournament, they could be ranked maybe second in one of the regions, and I think that is what Larry Finch has been trying to sell this team on, to get good position in the NCAA tournament. I think you're right, though. Both of these teams are in. 11 points now for LeBradford Smith. The game tied at 50. Hey, what a competitor Larry Finch is. He really turned his club around. They were struggling in the middle of the conference season. Not missed, but LeBradford Smith had it as Louisville basketball. And I said to Larry Finch when I saw him at practice yesterday, Congratulations, Coach. You really turned it around. He said, yeah, but we didn't finish it. We lost the last game and lost a tie for the championship. Well, you know, they win that game. They tie for the championship. And uh, they beat Florida State twice, so they would have been uh, the number one team in this conference. Would have won it. 
from the Big 8 semifinals, Oklahoma in front of Iowa State, 44-36 at halftime. Last night, Colorado took Oklahoma to double overtime before the Sooners could win it. Oklahoma playing without Mookie Blaylock, who was suspended for one basketball game. He's back today. Iowa State took Oklahoma State out last night in that tournament. Kansas State beat Kansas. And Missouri hammered Nebraska last night in Big 8 play. Boy, what started off as just a trickle of teams getting into the NCAA throughout the week turns into a flood now today and tomorrow as the 64-team field will be completed by late tomorrow afternoon. Championship game here at 4 o'clock. What an exciting time of the year it is for college basketball. I love this time of the year. Ellison with a miss. Fought underneath for the rebound, and Ballard comes out with it. Gets to L.A. Perry. Aggressive rebound by Steve Ballard that time. Game tied at 50, 11-32, left in the contest. Elia Perry deep on the wing. This has been some game. What well, has? Mutt with a catch, the shot, in and out. And Ballard's going to be called for a foul. He got Purvis Ellison, and that is the second foul on Steve Ballard. In the second half now, team fouls even at five. Ballard on Steve Ballard, his second 15 foul. Time out here, 11-23 left in this contest. Game tied at 50. Two points, his season high. That one's off the front of the rim. On Sharon Gibson, he looks shocked after he missed that free throw. He uh, uh, normally does a great job from the free throw line, but that just floored him right there. Gibson comes right back and hits that one. He's a 78% free throw shooter. Great defense by Elliott Perry. He played the defense and did the officiating also. <laughs> I thought he was going to pick up his third foul, but he worked the official that time and got him to call the travel. Elliott Perry guarding with Bradford Smith. You know, they were teammates in the McDonald's All-Star game. Now here they are matched up. In the Metro Conference semifinal game. Well, that's been an exciting matchup. Quickness by both players. And Memphis State very patient right now, using more time off the shot clock than you have used this entire game. 14 on the shot clock now. 10:04 left in the game. Rodney Douglas, uh, big basket. He has simply not been a factor in this basketball game. His first two points. Second shot in this basketball game. Well, Memphis State really playing the defense. Very aggressive right now defensively. Keith Williams is foul. Shine Gibson got him across the across the arm as Keith Williams made that move to the basket. Larry French boy, he's really been up working this basketball game. Keith Williams now will go to the line. That's the fourth foul on Cheyenne Gibson, and he has been the offense today for Memphis State. That fourth foul comes with 9.39 left in the game. Saw one of the Cardinal, Louisville Cardinal cheerleaders up that time. They just won their third national title, uh, cheerleading title. So uh, in addition to the success that the basketball team, uh, the men's basketball team is having, the Cardinal cheerleaders also very successful. We mentioned at halftime, the Memphis State Pom Pom Girls have won their, the dance team championships for several years. And this conference is really strong in that area, too. 53-50, Memphis State. Rodney Douglas. Douglas always serves as an, as an outlet against the Cardinal defense. He will come out high and catch the basketball. He's not a threat offensively, but he will go out there and catch the basketball. Oh, what a big basket. Over Purvis Ellison. Elliot Perry now has 10 points. Keith Williams in the lane. Shot no. Brett Mutt has the rebound. Memphis State up by five points. Back to Perry, he's open. And he is hot. He is filling in a three-point basket. Oh, and he hurt his leg, he's down. Maybe that's a Charlie horse. I it's think a it cramp. just a cramp, just locked up on him. Boy, he grabbed it very quickly. 
Eddie Cantler, the trainer, getting out there in a hurry. Well, watch him. He's going to set up behind this three-point line and follow through. He's just going to come down and see. He turns it, kind of comes down right there as he comes up and points to the bench right there. And well, that is one of the most painful injuries that a basketball player can have. You'll see Larry Finch call a timeout. And another player on the bench also with a, a cramp over there. It looks to me, I can't tell, maybe it's right. It's uh, Steve Ballard. Steve Ballard also down with a, a cramp. They got two cramps on the bench. And here comes Keith Williams out on the break for Louisville. Keith Williams hits the shot. He has eight points. And now it's Memphis State by six. The Tigers, Elliot Perry and Steve Ballard on the bench with cramps had just made a run and gone up by eight, the biggest lead of the day. A lot of times when it's real hot in the building and both teams are, are sweating a lot, you have some Charlie horses, but it's not particularly hot in this building. Of course, Fred, you and I are not out there running up and down the floor. Yeah. Ellison with a block. McLaughlin missed a shot, got his own rebound, shoveled it to Douglas. There's Elliot Perry up walking around. All right, here comes uh, Purvis Ellis, and that's where he's so valuable, always around the basketball. See Elliot Perry over there walking up and down the sideline, so I think he's going to be all right. McLaughlin shot good. And McLaughlin, he's been hurt. He has a, a problem with his foot. Didn't play in the last game against Virginia Tech, and that's one of the reasons why they lost that basketball game, the coaching staff will tell you. And Felton Spencer really taking command of the rebound was fouled by John McLaughlin. Second foul on John McLaughlin. Well, that was a good foul by uh, McLaughlin that time because uh, uh, it didn't give Felton Spencer an opportunity to put that offensive rebound back in. Sullivan back into the basketball game. Kimbrough is getting up off the bench. I think we're going to see him. He has four fouls, and he hasn't been in the game for a while. That's perfect. There's uh, Elliot Perry on the bench. He's feeling a lot better. I think we'll see him back in there in just a minute. Dalton Spencer. Two for three at the line now with six points. He's an academic All-American nominee. Very good student. Off the heel of the rim. Memphis State with a seven-point lead in the basketball. 7.48 left in the game. Mutt looks to be a little tired. Ernest Smith's shot misses. Rebound. Everett Sullivan up to LeBradford Smith. Ernest Smith fouled LeBradford Smith. <laughs> I like the reaction. LeBradford Smith, he went over and told Smith, hey, you got me, baby. Don't, don't <laughs> Smith wanted to jump off. Jump off. 7.36 left in this basketball game. Larry Finch, the Memphis State coach, shouting instructions down the floor to his team. Benny Crum, likewise. I'll tell you, Memphis State been very fortunate because they have both Ballard and Elliot Perry on the bench, and they've been able to hold on to this lead. Now it's a uh, six-point lead, so uh, Memphis State very fortunate right now because both of those guys going down with a cramp in the leg. Ballard is up off the bench. He's getting ready to come back into the game, and so is Perry. The Bradford has 15 points. And Perry and Powder do report now. You see them coming back. Time out here, 7.36 left in the game. And we'll be back right after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. so stay with us. Coming up in the second semifinal game today, Florida State will go against South Carolina. Second half shooting, Louisville is at 7 out of 15 shots. Memphis State, 9 out of 21. Yeah. 7.36 left in the contest again. It's really been some game. Memphis State had an eight-point lead a few minutes ago, which was the biggest lead of the day. 
The two teams have been dueling even for most of the second half, and now the Bradford Smith almost got the steal. The McLaughlin saves it, but Perry couldn't hold on at the other end. Well, the Cardinals picking up the pressure, which they will do. They are a good full-court pressing team, so they will get out there and pressure you when they need some points from their defense. Ellison. The Bradford Smith. Would have been a three, but it wouldn't fall. But Ellison saved it right back to the Bradford. And I think he wanted it again. He did. Kenny Payne tries it instead. That's on the rim and off. Ellison got a hand on it again. Now McLaughlin has called for his third foul. And McLaughlin thought he got off all that time. The official didn't hesitate, though, to blow the whistle. Once again, you see a long rebound coming out of there. A good opportunity for the guards to get in there and to come up with one. But there is McLaughlin reaching in because he wasn't in real good defensive position. Kenny Payne, 84% free throw shooter. He has eight points today. Off the heel of the rim. 6.49 left. McLaughlin. Perry. Elliott Perry. Oh, he stopped the jump shot. Well, he has really turned on offensively after getting only five points in the first half. Ten points for Elliott Perry in the second half. Fifteen in the game now. Memphis State by seven. 6.30 to play. Kenny Payne tries to get it started back for Louisville. Can't. And the ball is out of bounds to Louisville under their own basket. <laughs> Cheyenne Gibson. Well, Gibson, has been, he's been on the bench for a while, and uh, he has 22 points sitting on the bench, so uh, look for him to come back in there. Kenny Payne picks up his 10th point of the day for Louisville. Now Memphis State by five. Elliott Perry against Everett Sullivan. Elliott Perry, just a sophomore, has already scored 1,000 points in his career. Brett Munt, blocked by Ellison, his third block of the game. Sullivan goes for three. LeBradford Smith tips it back outside. Now Sullivan takes it in the lane. Whoa, the dish to Purvis Ellison. Woo! Well, when the Cardinals are playing like they're playing right now, even though they're down by three points, when they're playing this aggressively and coming up with balls like they are, they are so effective. McLaughlin fought for the charge, waved the basket off, and Larry Finch is livid. McLaughlin's fourth foul. Well, uh, Memphis State right now out of control, and McLaughlin just taking the ball to the basket. See, LeBretton Smith there playing excellent defense and comes up with the charge. That basket is not going to count. So now with 5.37 left in this game, Louisville is back within three. Uh, it's no question the Cardinals, they've been able to get back into this game through their aggressive play defensively. Second game coming up, North Carolina, Florida State. Well, you just simply can't turn around and expect to get the shot off uh, over Purvis Ellison. He is such a good shot blocker, you just can't do it. You have to put the ball on the floor, get him leaning one way or the other. And here's Ellison moving around without the basketball, comes up with it. A good pass by Sullivan to get the ball to him down low, and uh, he knows what to do with it when he catches it down there. mascot several Louisville fans in attendance and up the state they're having a hard time from the field for at only 37 percent uh, when they've shot the ball less than 56 50 percent for the game they uh, are 12 and 6 so they need to shoot the ball a little bit better they'll have a much better chance of winning this game 537 left in this contest with South Carolina and Florida State coming up next. Everett Sullivan. I'll tell you what, he's a freshman, but he is not bashful about taking the shot or making the big play, is he? Uh, the pressure shots, uh, the big shots, he yeah. doesn't hesitate to shoot. He wants it in game situation. Kenny Payne. Oh, what a nice shot by Kenny Payne. Talk about big time baskets. 12 points for Payne, and now again, Louisville back within one of Memphis State with 5.08 left in the game. 
and a whistle blowing. Now, Kenny Payne, he's been in double figures 17 out of the last 18 ball games, and he's averaging 16 points over that uh, over that period. That's four fouls on Furness Ellison now, with 5:07 left in the game. I've seen uh, both of these coaches pointing to their heads in this basketball game, telling his players to just play smart and use your head more in this game than I've seen in a long time. Cheyenne Gibson to the line. Memphis State, excuse me, Fred, I was going to say they have done a good job from the free throw line, though. They're 18 of 21 uh, from the free throw line, so that's the one thing that is keeping them ahead in this basketball game. They're now up 63-61. Gibson is 9 out of 10 at the free throw line. And he has 24 points, so a good game by Cheyenne Gibson. Make it 25 for Cheyenne Gibson. Three-point lead. Memphis State, 5-0-5 left in the game. Kimbrough's shot rolls around and out. Well, he is just simply struggling from the field. Ballard with another big rebound for Memphis State. Okay, Larry Finch is the coach of the year in the Metro Conference. And watching his team play and how far he's brought him this year, you can really understand why, can't you? Well, I, I tell you what I'm more impressed with than anything when watching Memphis State play is that they play hard every minute of the game. And Kimbrough just uh, not getting the breaks. I think that is his fifth, fifth foul, so he's going to have to go to the bench. I thought he got over here this time and did a good job defensively. Watch how he adjusts coming away from the basketball. He reaches in and looks to me as though he has all ball. The official gets him with the foul, but tough break that time by Tony, Tony Kimbrough. Only two points, and he is such so much a better basketball player than uh, those two points indicate. So Kimbrough has to leave the game. Diane Gibson has 26 points today. Now 27 as he made his uh, 12th free throw in 13 attempts. Rodney Douglas just came back into the lineup. Brett Munt went to the bench. Douglas uh, uh, averaging over 11 points a basketball game, almost 11 points a game, and uh, hasn't had a lot of shots here in this one so far. Look for him, though, to make a couple big shots before this one is over. Another big rebound for Bowder. Oh, boy. A three. Man, and Purvis Ellison keeps coming out and throwing that arm up in the air, trying to make Elliott Perry adjust his shot. But Perry's just going right up, making the big ones. Ellison missed the tip one fall. Rodney Douglas with a rebound. Memphis State up by seven with 354 to play. And with this trip, they could really hurt Louisville. Well, look for them to really start letting the air out of the ball, trying to use that shot clock. They will take only good shots right now. Elliot Perry right at Ellison, who has four fouls. Well, like I say, when you're taking the ball into a shot blocker, you have to do just that. Take the ball right to him and not pull up and allow him to get those feet set for the for the block. Ellison with the rebound. 17 for Purvis Ellison. Seven-point lead, Memphis State, 315 to play. The rubber match of the three-game series this year. They exchanged home court victories. Louisville won 101-85 in Memphis, and Memphis State 72-67 in Louisville after getting the Cardinal down 24-0 in that game to start it. But Memphis State right now, as I said, they're going to be very patient right now, and they'll take those shots. That's a good shot. That one missed, and it's going to be an easy deuce at the other end for Keith Williams. His 10th point today. Right, Larry Fitch is up saying, where are my guards? That time, uh, Shine Gibson took the shot. Elliott Perry not in position to get back defensively. Turnover. Louisville down five. Going to get the ball back. And a timeout is taken here. We have 2.33 left in this basketball game. And a basketball game it has been at this break with 2.33 left to play. Memphis State up by five. Cheyenne Gibson has had a big day with 27 points, just one off his career high. But Louisville now fighting back within five, getting the ball back. Well, Sullivan. defense is going to be the key for the Cardinals right now. Memphis State 
still shooting the ball rather poorly here for the basketball game, only 39%. The Cardinals now at 49%. Rebound pretty much the same. But the uh, shooting percentage for Memphis State is the key right now. Of course, they've made 21 of 25 free throws, so uh, that's enabled them to stay in control of this game. Cardinals only 8 of 17 from the free throw line. Let's hurt them. They're going to get their chance to score here. They go inside to Felton Spencer, takes it over Mutt, misses. But Brett Mutt is called for a foul, his third. Well, Mutt doing the only thing he can do right now, really. He allows Felton Spencer to catch the ball down low, and he just keeps his hands up, tries to use his body to muscle uh, Spencer just a little bit farther away from the basket. He picks up his foul. Seven points for Felton Spencer today. Battle for the basketball. Elliot Perry trying to save a camp. Louisville down four gets the ball again with 2.03 to play. Well, Bradford Smith trying to get back into the ball game here. Louisville at the moment has six players out there. Now Felton Spencer is going to come out of the game. <laughs> Well, if they could uh, work it to where they could keep the six players on the floor, that would be a way for them to get back into this uh, basketball game, get the lead back. They're down by four points right now. Ernest Smith returns to the floor now from Memphis State, replacing Brett Munt. A cup of ice fell on the floor down on that end is the reason for the holdup. Officials making sure they get all the ice up off the floor. Kenny Payne will handle the inbounds pass when we get back to action here. Cardinals, once again, they picked up the pressure defensively, and, and that's what uh, has enabled them to get back in to control of the tempo of this basketball game. Kenny Payne. Well, Bradford from the corner, working on Perry, puts up the spinning jump shot, got it, he's oh, fouled. Big basket right there. Great individual effort by LeBradford Smith. Something uh, you just have, we haven't seen a whole lot of this season and something that he should take upon himself to do more of. He just takes it one on one. He has about three inches, maybe four on Kelly Perry and just follows through on the jump shot and gets that one to go. Uh, what a move in a clutch situation. Now it's a two point game. Now it's a one point game. LeBradford Smith with a big three point play. Perry's Six, third foul. 16 points for Smith in this one. Ballard out there as a pressure release. He'll come out the top of the key anywhere he has to go on the floor. There's Louisville now with a chance to go in front. Oh, they had Ellison up there, but Perry stopped Williams and he couldn't make the pass. Williams loose on the baseline over the Ellison screen. Ellison trying to stick it. That was Eric Sullivan who went up and tried to get it back in, and he was fouled by Ballard. Now a minute seven left, and Louisville could go in front. They've made a comeback. Well, they have. Uh, a lot of the people here thought that the Cardinals went over and back on that play. Of course, the ball was not all the way across the line. You see Keith Williams with the shot from the corner. There's Sullivan right there trying to tip it in. Ballard comes over the back. Third foul on Steve Ballard. Everett Sullivan, the freshman of the line. He has five points today, 0 for 2 at the free throw line. And now a timeout is taken here. Both coaches go to work. Timeout with one minute and seven seconds left in what has been a scintillating basketball game. Memphis State up by one. Percent shooter, 0 for 2 today. It's been some basketball game, Jack. Well, it really has. And once again, I think the thing that's really going to stand out when this game is over is the defensive effort of both of these ball clubs. It's, it's been a great game defensively. Oh, Sullivan still gets a chance to tie it. He's sure. over three at the line today. It's showing up in the fact that Memphis State shooting only 39% from the field. The Cardinals shooting it at 48%. 
Six points now for Everett Sullivan. We're tied at 70 apiece. 104 left in the game. Elliot Perry spinning move at midcourt. They double team him. He's going right by. Cheyenne Gibson. 32 on the shot clock, 53 on the game clock. I wouldn't be surprised at all if Ballard is the guy that shoots, the, that gets the big shot right here. Hasn't been a factor in this game, so he wouldn't be the one that you would think to take the shot, but wouldn't be surprised if he makes the big play. 12 on the shot clock, Cheyenne Gibson. Perry, eight on the shot clock. Perry against Keith Williams, goes for the long three and misses, and Louisville has the ball with 24 seconds to play, and the game tied at 70. Cards to call a timeout. They'll go over the sideline and try to come up with a big play. I don't think that was the shot Larry Finch wanted. Well, it wasn't. Uh, you can work the ball in down low and get a much better shot than that. We'll be right back. You know what a three-point play is in basketball. Here's what it is at day's ends. Great rooms. To the free throw shooter. Cheyenne Gibson fouls out. He had his biggest day of the year with 27 points, just one off his career high. But he's out of the game now. He drew his fourth foul with 9.39 left in the game and survived until two seconds were left. Everick Sullivan, I think, is going to be the shooter. And he's had a tough day on the line. Now Memphis State calls timeout. Two seconds left. Larry Finch calls the Tigers around him. See Larry Finch going to work in the Memphis State huddle. I think Everett Sullivan's going to be the guy on the line. Yeah, he hasn't been real successful from the free throw line uh, so far in this basketball game. I know he uh, missed his first three attempts there. He's one for four so far today, a freshman. But we talked about it earlier. He likes the big shot. He'll be comfortable in this situation. Well, you, you, can, you can bet he will go up there to the line with a lot of poise and uh, do a good job at following through. Here's going to be the shot. I thought Ellison might have gotten hit on the arm. Let's see what happens. Smith gets him late, and there's a foul right there. Yeah, Gibson did come over the back. Good call by the official. You have to call it when it's that obvious. Good call by the official. So Everick Sullivan, a 6'5 freshman from Simpsonville, South Carolina, 63% free throw shooter for the year, one for four today, up there with the game tied and two seconds left. the big shot. <laughs> he beat Florida State with a three from the corner. Now he makes the free throw here with two seconds left. <laughs> Memphis State had Louisville down nine late in the second half, and the Cardinals have rallied to lead now with two seconds left to play. This has been a comeback by Louisville. They did it with their defense. Yes, they did. No question about it. When they picked up the pressure defensively is when they got back into the basketball game and they could, took control of the tempo. Up to that point, Memphis State was pretty much doing what they wanted. The Cardinals picked up the full court pressure, forced a couple turnovers, and uh, they were able to, uh, as I say, get back into control of things in this basketball game. Curvis Ellison, another big day, a double-double, 17 points and 11 rebounds. Now Denny Crum is going to pull everybody from Louisville off the line. Everett Sullivan's going to walk out there by himself. If the pressure's off. He's made the first one. If he, whatever he does, Memphis State's got two seconds to react to it. Well, I... I don't think he, he would miss this one on purpose, but uh, if he does uh, miss this when Memphis State is going to have to get the rebound and then do something, and he does he miss. miss it on purpose, yeah. and Memphis State gets the timeout with still two seconds on the clock. Denny Crum yelling about the clock, wanting to know why no time came off. You got to, now you have to question, is that a, was that a plus two or right on two? Some clocks, you know, will turn to two when it's really two plus. In other words, when it gets to three seconds, it automatically shows you the two right. when there's really two plus left. And then he wants to know why no time came off the clock. Well, I'll tell you what happened now. Uh, 
Sullivan, he missed that free throw, but what he did is he shot a line drive. So the rebound came off very quickly, and that enabled Memphis State to get the ball and call timeout before any time was able to go off the clock. Memphis State coaches. I think, though, the reason why um, Denny Crump said, hey, let's go to the line and miss that free throw is because you know that Memphis State, in order to get a good shot off, probably would have tried to throw it to the half court and have they would have taken a long shot. So either way, whether up by one or two, if it's a three-point shot, yeah. Memphis State would have won anyway. Whatever shot they got in that situation was going to be a three-point attempt. Right. Exactly right, and that's why you can go up there and miss uh, that, that second free throw after making the first one. Now Memphis State will throw it in from the baseline. Two seconds left to play. They have John McLaughlin, a three-point shooter in the game now. Perry's out there, Ernest Smith, and they put Orion Watson in the game for the first time today, a freshman who's a three-point shooter. And conversely, Denny Douglas Crum came throws in to Watson at midcourt, and Purvis Ellison was all over him. Watson stepped on the out-of-bounds stripe. It's over, and Louisville defeats Memphis State 71-70 to in semifinal play. And Purvis Ellison at 6'9 was guarding 5'10 Orion Watson. Louisville able to come back down by nine late in the ball game. Fought back to beat Memphis State. 71 to 70. So Memphis State now 21 and 10 on the year. Surely a lock for a berth in the NCAA tournament. Bows out of the tournament here. And Louisville at 21 and 8 will advance to the championship round. Orion Watson, defended by Purvis Ellison, stepped on the out-of-bounds strike, but the shot wasn't close anyway. Douglas threw it to Watson, who was just inserted into the game. Watson turns around, sees Ellison, tries to get some room, stepped on the out-of-bounds strike right there, and the ball game was over for all intents and purposes. Right there. And it is over now. The Louisville fans celebrating a 71-70 win over Memphis State for the Cardinals in the first semifinal game here in Columbia, South